Hi Precalc, we're back. This is uh, video number this is video number three and we're still in section four point six. In the front of your textbook are all the graphs um, and on a previous day we were doing the sine and the cosine function and today we're going to do we did the tangent and now I'm going to do the cotangent. I'm not going to break it down as much as the tangent because you have the basic idea now, but I'll just I'll just run through it with you. But your book has some good information here, and um, even if you don't have the book, you could just sort of stop the video and sort of study what the book has for your trig functions. So again, we're going to do we're going to do this one now. I will just show you the table and not go through before like all the little details. I'll give you the standard table. So when you're taking test three, you're going to reference the standard table and modify it to what you need to graph. So I'm just going to start with a basic cotangent function. And again, this is the standard table I'm going to write for you here. Just like the tangent function, the length of this function is also pi. If you notice, there's also a different, it shifted 90 degrees, so instead of it being in between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, it actually goes from 0 to pi. And unlike the tangent function, it goes downhill instead of uphill. Okay, so this is going to go uphill. So it's going to have the VAs on the end, but it's going to go uphill. Uh, sorry, it's going to go downhill. So this is going to be 1, 0 negative one because you see it's going to as you plot the points it's going to come down so it should come down we're going to do the table for the new function i'm asking you to draw this guy over here so anything inside the trig affects the x column and anything outside the trig affects the y column the y is always easier to do, so let's start there. So everything in the y column is three times larger because what comes out of the cotangent is going to be multiplied by three. VA, stay VA, so you could just rewrite that. So this will be three times one or three. This will be three times zero or zero. This will be three times negative one or negative three. And this guy will be a VA. The formulas um, in general are the same except the interval is different. So in terms of the formula for the cotangent, the period formula is the same for the cotangent and the tangent, which is going to be pi over b. The interval, I'm sorry, the, um, the increment is the same for all functions. It's the period over 4. But the interval will be different uh, for the cotangent. It's different than the, the tangent the, and the sine and the cosine. So you're going to take what's inside the trig function. And you're going to set it equal to the old start, which would be here. All right? This was the old or original start. And you're going to re-index it. You're going to solve for x. And the old stop was pi. And you're going to re-index that. All right, so here we go. Let's do the work. So b in this case is pi over 2. Don't include the x. b equals to pi over 2. So I'm going to do pi divided by pi over 2. If you're finding this difficult, let me add more details. It's pi divided by pi over 2. That's another way to look at it, which is the same thing as pi times the flip of this, which is 2 over pi. Okay, so I'm writing out some details if it helps you see it better. And now the pi's cancel, and the final answer here is 2. So the period, or the width, is 2 units. That sometimes freaks people out because they feel like, oh, you've got to have a pi. No, no, you don't. You don't. You just, 
you can have you can have just a plain value you don't have to have uh, a decimal value the period so now we're going to take the period which is two we're going to divide it by four this reduces to be a half so that is the width between the jumps and now i'm going to find the start value so unlike the tangent this function does not expand and collapse around the origin so because this graph was not pushed left or right it's still going to start at zero okay um, if you want me to prove that to you i will do that for you but you don't if this guy isn't pushed left or right you don't have to do it so the old start uh, the old start is zero so you would set it equal to old start you would get rid of the two over pi the pi you get rid of the pi over two by canceling it out and then anything times zero is zero okay so it is still going to start at zero the you just learn this stuff by practice and experience but the cotangent function um unlike the tangent function doesn't behave like an accordion it just starts at zero if it's not going to start at zero that's because you shifted it left or right but again it just comes with experience So we start at zero, we're going to add the increment. The increment in this case is a half. So zero plus a half is a half. Then we add a half again. So we add a half again, we're going to get one. We add the increment again. We get one and a half. We add the increment again. We get four over two, which is two. And once the table's complete, you're, you're you found your points and you're you're good to draw it. I just make an observation here. Just notice that you went from zero to two, which means that the the width of this graph is two units long, which which is is what we were looking for, a width of two inches long. And again, if anybody wants to calculate the stop, you're welcome to calculate the stop. It will come out as a two. That's what that x value will solve as. Okay, so um, once you find the table for test three, I want you to then graph it. So let's work on that because um, I'm going to ask you to do that. So let's just scale this the best we can. I'm looking at the numbers. Um, the x values are relatively small. The y values are, are larger. So let's see here. If I call this a half, it's 1, 3 over 2. Two. Okay, so if that's two, then three is going to have to be bigger than that. Because if that's a two, then that would have to be about a three there. Three and negative three. Okay. Now I'm just going to follow the table, right? So it's zero. I have a vertical asymptote. At two, I have a vertical asymptote. At one half, I'm at three. At one, I'm at zero. At three halves, I'm at negative three. So just like with any kind of uh, graphing in math class, uh, you usually want to have a sense of what the graph looks like. The points are just helping you. So because the amplitude on this is a 3, this guy's like really stretched out. He's really stretched out here. So a lot of times um, this looks more like closer to the x-axis usually. It's because the amplitude is a 3, it's it's really pulled pretty hard. Not not quite linear, but pretty pretty hard in the middle there. All right, let's now do a, a photocopy this. So do another one of these. Just do your best. So I'm going to see about there, and then I'm going to cut it here. Okay. Okay, so we'll go here. We'll go here. Okay, gang, and there we go. We got two cycles.
we got two cycles of this cotangent function. Okay gang, I hope you enjoyed that. I'll be back with more videos for this section. Catch you soon. Bye-bye.